Hey everyone, welcome back into another video and today we are diving into a review of the Orion OS and AOSP based custom ROM and I've got the latest version running and in this video I'll be covering everything starting from its user interface to its performance so make sure to watch the video till the end and before we jump in smash the like button and hit subscribe if you haven't already cause right now only 4% of my viewers are subscribed so if you enjoy contents like this make sure to support the channel it really helps. Now starting with the user interface, I have to say that Orion OS is one of the few Android 15 based rooms that truly feels polished. At first glance, the setting apps might look similar to other AOSP based Android 15 custom rooms with a clean and familiar layout but once you dive into the about phone section, you will notice the extra attention to detail. Here you get a well designed info tab displaying your device code name, manufacturer, RAM and processor details in a sleek organized way. And when you open the Android version tab, it looks even better. The UI element feels refined and everything is presented in a visually appealing way. And I'm currently running its latest version, the Orion OS 15.1 Hydrooxide. And a big shout out goes to Viz aka Vivek Aryan for maintaining this ROM for POCO X4 Pro. And by the way, this build ships with the February 2025 security patch and is running the Nebula kernel, though kernel 2 support is not included by default. Now this ROM comes with the Orion OS Home which is based on the Launcher 3 and like other Launcher 3 mod, it offers a variety of customization options. You can change the icon pack, adjust icon size and modify font size to personalize your setup. The home screen settings allow customization of the interface and Google search bar including background opacity and corner radius control. App drawer features include forced themed icons to generate monochromatic icons for apps that don't support them and you can also adjust the row height using this option. For the recent menu features, so you can view memory info, take screenshots and use Google Lens. And by the way, circle to search works perfectly fine. And there's also an option to hide your apps for extra privacy. Overall, Orion OS offers a clean, customizable and feature-rich experience. Now since this is a Google Apps or G Apps build, you get a set of Google Apps pre-installed by default. But beyond that, the maintainer has also included some great additions. So firstly, Google Dialer is the default calling app, but no worries, it also includes the basic call recorder app for recording calls without any announcement. And by the way, this room ships the Leica camera for capturing high quality photos and it can record videos up to 1080p 60fps. And by the way, if you are an audiophile, audiophile. The Dolby Atmos is pre-included for an enhanced audio experience, but that's not all. You also get the Viper for Android, which is one of the best audio equalizers for Android devices. So if you don't know about it, I have made a detailed video on how to use it, so make sure to check it out from the i button. So yes, that's for the pre-installed apps. Alright, now let's talk about the features and customization this ROM delivers. So when you head it in the settings, you will find a dedicated tab called Molecular. And this is where all the cool customizations are packed. And honestly, the interface itself looks really polished. So big shout out to the Orion OS team for that. Starting off with the lock screen features, you get Pulse which shows a visual audio equalizer that appears on the navigation bar, lock screen or even ambient display while you play music and below that you find more customization options to tweak your lock screen exactly like you want. Moving on to the QS settings, you can change the battery icon style and even modify your QS panel looks. Right now I have set it on default and now if I switch it to outline, you will see that it applies the changes. And you can also adjust the number of rows and columns in your QS panel and even enable animations for QS styles which adds a nice touch. Now coming for the theming options, you get multiple font styles and even you can customize the lock screen clock font. But that's not all, you can tweak your system icons, app icon shapes, signal icons, Wi-Fi icons and navigation bar icons. Also an option to change the brightness slider style but unfortunately it doesn't seem to work at the moment like even if I select any of the style I see no changes. Hopefully this gets fixed in the future updates. Next up we have the status bar features and here you can customize the status bar clock and even add a background chip on it. There are also a couple of battery styles like the iOS 15 landscape battery which applies instantly plus you get a couple of pre-included logos that you can add to your status bar for a unique look. 
For notifications, there's the edge light feature which lightens up the screen when you receive an ambient display notification and talking about gestures, you get the quick tap gesture which means that you can double tap the back of your phone to trigger actions. For example, I have set it to take screenshots and you can see that it works flawlessly and you can also assign it to open apps and perform other tasks. Now when it comes to sound features, this ROM actually includes a variety of lock and unlock sounds which is something I haven't seen in many rooms. The last time I saw this feature was in Evolution X so it's a great addition. Now for the miscellaneous features, so this ROM includes component spoofing but there are few issues. The play integrity fix is here but every time I try to check the values, it crashes. So that's definitely something that needs to be fixed. And there's also app specific spoofing like higher FPS spoof for games but unfortunately it didn't work for me in BJMI. However, the Google Photo spoof works perfectly fine so no issues there. Now in the app section you get the game space which helps optimize the gaming performance and monitor FPS while you are playing the games. Under the display settings you get the per app refresh rate feature allowing you to set custom refresh rate for different apps and there's also an option to adjust the saturation for more vibrant display. There's also touch boost which increases the touch polling rate to make the screen feel more responsive. And lastly there's an auto high brightness mode which kicks under the direct sunlight and works perfectly fine. So yes, that's all for the features and customizations. And now let's talk about the performance this room delivers. Now let's talk about the performance of this room. So starting with the benchmark scores, I ran Antutu and this device scored around 405k which is pretty decent and the CPU throttled to 81% of its max performance with a peak score of 193k and now you might be thinking that is this performance lower than expected? But honestly, in real world usage, it doesn't feel like that at all. To test the actual gaming performance, I played BGMI on smooth plus extreme graphics now by default you don't get the extreme settings so I had to flash the FPS unlocker module since the built-in spoofing didn't work. So keep that in mind if you plan on trying the same. Now for TDM matches I got consistently about 57 to 60 FPS which is really a good number and even in longer sessions the FPS hovered to 55 FPS consistently with no major frame drops or overheating issues at all. And by the way, for the TDM matches, the battery drain was max 2% every match. And if I talk about the overall battery backup, then yes, you can expect 7 plus hours of battery backup even on moderate to heavy usage, which is pretty impressive. So performance wise, this room holds up really well, whether you are gaming or using it for daily task. Now coming to the bugs, as I mentioned earlier, the brightness slider customization doesn't work, the component spoofing has issues especially with play integrity fix and higher FPS spoof which don't function properly, but apart from this, I didn't encounter any major bugs and overall the room performs really well. Hopefully the team will fix these issues in the next update and here lies my final verdict. If you are looking for a custom room that offers a clean and unique UI, smooth performance, good customization options, then Orion OS is definitely worth trying. You can flash this room using the AOSP recovery, link in the description. So yep, that's it for the review and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content and see you in the next one. So goodbye and take care.